This is the Bryant News Broadcast with your host, Mike Cronin. Sarah Larrabee. Dan Janis with the weather. And Brian Walsh with sports. And now, your Bryant News Broadcast. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Bryant News Broadcast. The father of a Marine who was killed in Iraq is being ordered to pay the legal costs of the people who protested at his son's funeral. A federal appeals court informed Albert Snyder that he must pay $16,000 in legal fees to the Westboro Baptist Church. Snyder previously brought the group to court and sued for $5 million. He lost the judgment and is now required to pay the legal fees for the church group. Snyder said he is not paying any money unless the order comes directly from the Supreme Court. There is no doubt that Apple's iPhone is one of the most popular cell phones out there. However, since its debut in 2007, only users who carry AT&T had the opportunity to own the smartphone. The contract between Apple and AT&T is up in just a few months and there has been major speculation as to whether or not Apple will stick with AT&T or move to other networks such as Verizon or Sprint. If Apple switches networks, more users will have access to the iPhone, which would mean a boost in sales for both companies. Regardless of the switching rumors, one thing is for sure. Apple has announced that this summer they will reveal another version of their iPhone and it will be slimmer and have a faster processor. For now, we will all just have to wait and see what Apple has in store for us next. All right, Sarah, well, now as we turn it over to Dan with weather, mm -hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> we've seen outside, it's just been a lot of rain, but really at Bryant, we've been kind of secluded to that. I mean, we really haven't mm -hmm. seen the full effects of this flood like the rest of Rhode Island has seen. I think it's because we're on a hill. I mean, that yeah, definitely yeah. helps. All the water goes down nicely, um, but... At home, it's really bad. Yeah, yeah, yes. it's, it's just terrible for everyone who's been affected by this flood. All right, so let's turn it over to Dan Janis with a look at our weather. Thank you, Sarah. Well, behind me, we have probably one of the best pictures that we've seen in a long time. We see clear skies as the rain has finally moved out towards the ocean. It was a pretty bad few couple days, but let's take a look at our seven-day future cast. We have finally earned some nicer weather. We're going to hit the 70s this week, and as we have sunny skies through the later part of the week. The April showers will attempt to bring us some May flowers, though, as showers start up again on Monday. Now, these past few days have been a good time to bring out that kayak or rowboat as we've seen record rain totals. Almost a foot of rain had fallen over Rhode Island since Monday, with some local areas seeing more. Providence had close to nine inches of rainfall. Now, not only did we have to deal with the rain, but the wind was also a problem with gusts over 40 miles an hour in some places, which really sent some umbre umbrellas calling for mercy. I believe it is safe to say the worst is over, and hopefully the damage will not be long-lasting. Well, Dan, that's great weather. Yeah. It's not going to prolong any longer. No, we got some sunny, sunny skies coming our way, a little bit more. You know, April showers are going to bring the May flowers out, but nothing as yeah. bad as that. Like they said, you know, that was a once in a hundred year yeah. storm, so hopefully no more of those for a while. But hurricane season is coming up, and we haven't been hit by one since 1955, so hopefully, you know, knock on wood, won't get another one of those. Because yeah. that'll bring a lot more rain. Seems like summer is so far away, doesn't it? It is. So far away, yet so close. All Hold right. on tight, Mike. A couple more months. All right, we're going to turn it over to Brian now at sports. Brian, what's up? Typically on the show, I do not like to rip on athletes or teams and give a considerable thought before I doubt anyone, and I mean anyone. That's that, for that being said, Pac-Man Jones is just asking for trouble. This man has played as many NFL games as he has been suspended for. When he came out of the draft in 2005, he had a bright future ahead of him. But after 2007 getting suspended for the entire season after constant off-field issues is pathetic. In 2008, the Cowboys signed him for hopes of redemption, and what he, did he do? Beat up a team-employed bodyguard who escorted him to a nightclub. Playing in the NFL is a privilege, folks, and one this guy should not have. The Lions have had turns for the worse, but signing him certainly is not the answer to rebound from the 2-14 and 14 season they've had. He has done nothing for seven years besides being arrested six times. Shouldn't that scream, do not take me? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, well, shame on Wade Phillips for that one. 
Fool me three times. I sure as heck hope not. Back to you, Mike. All right, Brian, thanks a lot for sports. <clears throat> Two planes almost colliding in midair. United Airlines Boeing 777 jetliner and a small Cessna aircraft came within 300 feet of colliding with each other above the San Francisco, California sky. The United Airlines flight was carrying over 250 people while the small airplane was piloted by only one person. The National Transportation Safety Board has launched an investigation into the incident, but there is no word yet on what caused this near tragedy. Well, as Dan has mentioned, this past week was full of record breaking weather surprises. Even though the rain has ended, the cleanup of Rhode Island has just begun. Basements are flooded, people have been evacuated, roadways and schools are still closed, and the pictures coming in from all over the state are unreal. Rhode Islanders have never seen this kind of damage before, but thankfully, help is here. President Obama has ordered federal aid for disaster relief, and the National Guard has been called in to assist the cleanup and the restoration of our state. Hopefully now that the sun is here, residents can assume their normal activities. But the flood of 2010 will always remain in the history books. Well, Sarah, you're a Rhode Island native. Yes. Did you get affected by the flood? Um, well, not here, because I do not commute. Right. But um, many friends and family members at home had to dig out from the flood. Um, cars, some of the family cars are gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just, the, the engines and the basement, everything, pictures, birth certificates. Mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a real mess yeah well you're from cranston where uh, even the yep. mall was under oh my god our mall i can't even believe it the pictures i'm seeing yeah it's going to be a long time before that opens up again mm -hmm. well hopefully so. soon enough we'll get back to the way things were and the cleanup effort hopefully can go fast sure so now tonight we have a new segment called the bryant update coming to bryant on thursday april 8th at 7 p.m in the bellow grand hall and it is an event that is sure to spark some debate. Members of the University of Cambridge's celebrated Cambridge Union debate team will join a few members of Bryan's Amarcon Delta Kappa, a national leadership honor society on campus, to discuss whether technology has hurt or helped society. The Cambridge Union debate team is the world's oldest debating society, and their arrival on our campus is truly special. This event is open to all Bryant staff, students, and faculty, as well as the general public. Tickets are available now for Bryant staff students and will be available for the public beginning on April 5th. So look out for more information to come. This year marks the eighth time in nine years that Bryant's chapter of Students in Free Enterprise, also known as Scythe, has won their regional competition. They beat out more than 30 schools in the Northeast after giving a 22-minute presentation to a panel of business executives. Now moving on to nationals, they will compete against chapters from around the world, I mean, excuse me, around the country on May 11th through the 13th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Last week, Bryant University had the first annual public speaking colloquium, and it was nothing short of a success as six talented speakers took the stage. It started back on Friday the 19th when the first round of judging occurred for 30 contestants. Similar to American Idol, three respected judges narrowed the field down to six. I was lucky enough to be part of that six. And then on Monday the 22nd, Channel 12 meteorologist Michelle Muscatello hosted the event. It was a great night filled with wonderful speeches and support from the audience. President Makeley and the First Lady also attended this event. Christina Shaw was the ultimate winner, but everybody was a winner in my book. There was such a unique style that it would be hard for anybody to pick a winner. So great job to all, and thanks to Susan Barron and everyone else who put effort into this event. Bryant University's had a rough year when it comes to sports. From the men's football team posting below a 500 record, to the men's basketball team only winning one game this season. The transition from D2 to D1 has been tough on the school. But one team still managed to find success, Bryant Lacrosse. The lacrosse team has, done, has drawn great prospects for the season and is holding their weight in D1 by going 5-2. and two. This is a good sign for years to come and the school and high hopes for our sports teams. Thank you, Brian. That's going to do it for us here on the Bryant News Broadcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mike Cronin. I'm Sarah Larrabee. Tune in next week.